This episode of Yesterworld is sponsored by Hostinger. Go to hostinger.com slash yesterworld and use code yesterworld to receive 15% off your order. When fans of the Harry Potter franchise think of the most memorable set pieces from the Harry Potter film series, one of the first to come to mind is Harry, Ron, and Hermione's Gringotts Heist. Having featured high-speed minecarts, a fire-breathing dragon, and an edge-of-your-seat escape, it was without a doubt a theme park attraction waiting to happen. So let's explore the surprisingly rocky history behind Diagon Alley's flagship attraction, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Our story begins in September of 2010 when Terry Koo, Senior Vice President of Universal Creative, called a meeting to propose an expansion to the wizarding world of Harry Potter, which had opened in Universal's Islands of Adventure less than three months prior. The long-awaited addition to the park had already proven itself to be a resounding success, with attendance at the resort rapidly increasing and merchandise sales reaching an all-time high. While developing the Hogsmeade area of the Wizarding World, the Universal Creative team already had a future expansion in mind should the Potter-themed land meet expectations, that being Diagon Alley, the cobblestone shopping area for witches and wizards attending Hogwarts. When the team finally met to begin planning the first expansion to the Wizarding World, there was no question which magical establishment would serve as the centerpiece and main attraction of the area. Gringotts Wizarding Bank, the only building in Diagon Alley to be featured prominently in multiple Harry Potter films, was basically an attraction waiting to happen. The team began work on the expansion immediately, with much of the focus on developing the story for the Diagon Alley expansion's main attraction, then known as the Escape from Gringotts, which would take place during Harry, Ron, and Hermione's bank heist from the final book and film, and would occupy the area where Jaws the Ride was located, and serve as a permanent replacement. Universal Creative's writing staff was struck with a major problem almost immediately, as author J.K. Rowling had given the team strict guidelines for the attraction's narrative, requiring that the ride did not contradict the events of the novel, with priority on staying true to the film's secondary. As a result of these guidelines, Universal created a narrative for the story that more or less didn't feature the main trio whatsoever, as writers would only catch a glimpse of Harry, Ron, and Hermione far in the background near the conclusion of the ride. This iteration was to feature Bill Weasley as the leading man for the entire story, taking the visitors down to the Gringotts vault as they run into various security measures that had been set off by the trio as they attempted to steal the Horcrux from the Lestrange vault. It wasn't until the very end of the ride that riders would see the dragon, and would briefly spot Harry, Ron, and Hermione bursting through the ceiling of Gringotts as the ride ended. This version of the attraction, unlike most early ride concepts, went full steam ahead for nearly a full year of development. According to Senior Vice President Terry Koo, the team went as far as to create fully developed visuals for the attraction, and had submitted the narrative to J.K. Rowling for approval, who was happy with the ride's lack of interference with the events of the book and film series. Universal continued on with this idea until August of 2011, when the team realized the story they had crafted just wasn't enough to capture the essence of Harry Potter, and in their quest to stay true to what had been previously established, had lost sight of what truly made a theme park attraction great. There could not be a conflict between Harry Potter and Voldemort in Gringotts Bank. It just wasn't in the books. So we had to really look at this seriously and say, well, we have to create this. We have to go back to the author and tell her that maybe there are a couple of pages that fell out of the book. Following this realization, Universal Creative sought an audience with J.K. Rowling to explain to her what they felt was best for the ride's narrative. The team wanted to include the franchise's main characters in a meaningful role, while also providing some resolution via an escape from two of the series' most prominent villains, Lord Voldemort and Bellatrix Lestrange. The team created brand new visuals for the attraction, and upon meeting with Rowling managed to convince her that the ride would suffer if they were constrained by the canon events of the series. Once they had approval for the new and improved version, now appropriately titled Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, the team moved forward developing the new story. This version featured Harry, Ron, and Hermione at the forefront of the attraction, with riders following the trio as they traveled through Gringotts. Once every element of the script had been finalized, Universal Creative Engineers began work on the attraction's ride system, a steel roller coaster that utilized motion-based vehicles and a mixture of physical sets with 3D projection, similar to the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. Demolition of the Amity section of Universal Studios, where the Jaws ride was located, began on January 3rd of 2012, 
and was completely demolished and leveled by March of the same year. Construction then officially began on Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts and the rest of the Diagon Alley expansion, while other members of Universal Creative worked to put together the footage needed for the attraction. The team was set with the difficult task of recruiting as many members of the original cast as they could to reprise their roles for the Escape from Gringotts, and on November 21st of 2012, the assembled cast and crew met at a studio just outside of London to film ride footage for both Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts and the planned Hogwarts Express that would take guests from Hogsmeade and Islands of Adventure over to Diagon Alley in the neighboring park. Returning cast members for The Escape from Gringotts included Helena Bonham Carter as Bellatrix Lestrange, Ray Fiennes as Lord Voldemort, Donal Gleeson as Bill Weasley, and Rupert Grint as Harry Potter's best friend, Ron Weasley. Yeah, it was strange to, to put on the old costumes again, and it, it was, it was, I always had a sneaking suspicion that it wasn't completely over, I'll be back again. Of the core trio, Rupert was the only actor to reprise his role. Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson both declined to take part in the expansion, with Radcliffe stating in interviews that Escape from Gringotts was his line in the sand, as the last thing he wanted was to be playing the boy who lived at 30 years old. Because of this, Universal was forced to use existing footage from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollow Part 2 outtakes to include Harry and Hermione in the attraction, and hired voice actors for both to record their dialogue. This, combined with the near-exclusive use of green screens during filming, required a very long post-production process for the ride footage that resulted in a very tight production schedule. By the time the footage was complete in summer of 2013, construction of Diagon Alley and Gringotts Bank were well underway, and the expansion was slated to open just one year later. The lobby of the Wizarding Bank was created by painstakingly replicating every detail from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 2, including a chandelier comprised of 17,000 crystals, and the underground vaults were created using 37,411 square feet of sculpted stone. As the announced opening date of July 8, 2014 drew nearer, Universal Creative raced to put the finishing touches on Gringotts Bank, with the fire-breathing dragon perched upon the top only finishing installation just two weeks before opening day. Finally, four years after the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade debuted at Universal's Islands of Adventure, Diagon Alley opened to the world at Universal Studios Florida. Fans immediately rushed past Ollivander's, the Leaky Cauldron, and Weasley's Wizard Wheezes to be among the first to experience the land's central attraction located deep below the Wizarding Bank, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Fans who survived the opening day waiting times, which reportedly reached upwards of six hours, were in for a treat as upon entering the bank lobby they would pass by several highly detailed goblin bank tellers before reaching the end of the hall where the goblin Bogrod would give the visitors directions to where they'll be able to open their very own Gringotts Wizarding Bank account. If you wish to open an account, make your way to the security office where your Gringotts identification photo will be taken. Then, go directly to the office at the end of the corridor. From there, you will be escorted to the vaults. Well, that's all. Move along. The queue then leads Gringotts visitors to the security office, where they can have their ID picture taken for security clearance. These photos can be purchased after the ride is over, however due to Universal's rather steep prices, a loan from Gringotts itself may be required if you wish to keep the souvenir photo. Guests then pass by many of the Goblin's offices, including one where Harry, Ron, Griphook, and Hermione disguised as Bellatrix can be seen and heard discussing their plans to break into the Lestrange vault. Finally, Bill Weasley's office is reached at the end of the hall, where a short pre-show sets the stage for the main attraction. The Goblin Blordak greets visitors and explains he will be guiding them down to see the vaults. Bill Weasley then enters his office, retrieving the keys for Blordak and announcing that he will be accompanying the visitors on their tour. Guests are then directed into the next room, where a short safety spiel is played as guests board two elevators that take them down into the vaults. Visitors are then instructed to pick up a pair of 3D glasses, and after heading up a short flight of stairs are finally able to board the Gringotts minecart as the ride begins. After heading down a very short track, Bill and Blordak begin the process of connecting their cart to the guests to take them on a tour of the vaults. Before this can happen, security defenses are set off elsewhere in the bank by Harry, Ron, and Hermione, locking the visitors out with a large steel gate. Bellatrix Lestrange then arrives, suspicious that the cart filled with muggles are the imposters that triggered the Gringotts' alarms. She then cuts the track in two, and proceeds to send the guest cart flying downward deep underground. Bill manages to stop the cart using a resto momentum, just as Harry, Ron, Griphook, and Hermione arrive. The trio then tells Bill to quickly get the guests out of the bank before being ejected from their cart. 
Security trolls then pop up from below, pushing Bill and Blordak from their car before grabbing the visitor's ride vehicle and throwing it to the side, sending it spiraling out of control. The minecart rather unfortunately regains control directly in front of another group of trolls, with one latching onto the cart to pull it downward yet again. Bill manages to save the day for a second time, before Harry, Ron, and Hermione burst onto the scene on the back of a Ukrainian iron belly dragon, who nearly creates an entire cart of deep fried muggles, but is stopped in the nick of time by Bill. The trio then lets Bill and the audience know that they have secured the Horcrux from the Lestrange vault, and release the dragon from its shackles to begin making their escape. Bill then casts Wingardium Leviosa on the visitor cart, which for some reason sends the ride spiraling to the side, where Blordak urges guests to take shelter inside one of the vaults. This plan is very short-lived, as just seconds later Nagini, Bellatrix, and Voldemort burst through the wall, demanding the location of Harry Potter. Fortunately, no one in the ride is a snitch, and the ride continues onward before a second encounter with Bellatrix and Voldemort, who casts a large ball of fire that heads toward the guests, before being interrupted by the trio still aboard the dragon. Harry casts a spell towards the villains who disapparate, while Hermione links the guest cart to the dragon. Guests are then pulled to safety, and as Harry, Ron, and Hermione make their final escape, Bill bids the visitors goodbye, with the hopes that they are still willing to open an account at the so-called safest place on Earth. Unsurprisingly, the Diagon Alley expansion and Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts was an immediate success. Fans of the franchise loved the experience of finally getting to tag along on a classic Potter adventure straight out of the books, whereas Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey had served as more of a greatest hits of the most popular Potter set pieces. Of course, Diagon Alley wouldn't be the last Harry Potter themed expansion to come to the Universal theme parks, with the Potter themed coaster Hagrid's Magical Motorbike Adventure opening in June of 2019, and a third area set in the Wizarding World rumored to debut with Universal Orlando's upcoming fourth gate. If you'd like to learn more about Potter's history with the parks, be sure to check out my previous Harry Potter episode that will be linked in the description below, where we covered Harry Potter's early theme park history, from the first ever Potter Park in early 2000s Australia, to Disney's planned Potter expansion in the Magic Kingdom, all the way to the opening of Hogsmeade in 2010, it is an episode every fan of the Wizarding World should check out. Speaking of things you should check out, today's sponsor is Hostinger. With Hostinger, you'll be able to host multiple websites in one place at a very affordable price. Hostinger is also accessible to anyone, and even with no coding experience, you will be able to have your very own website up and running quicker than any of the competition. Choosing the right web host is very important, and because Hostinger guarantees 99.9% .9 uptime, around-the-clock support chat, and superior speed performance, Hostinger will without a doubt be the home of the future Yesterworld website. You can also easily migrate your existing domains over to Hostinger, or in the case of Yesterworld, check for availability and conveniently register the name of your future website all in one place. The future Yesterworld website will be your ultimate one-stop shop for podcasts, episodes, and more. Just head on over to Hostinger.com Yesterworld and use code Yesterworld to receive 15% off your order and begin building your online identity today. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and if you want to hear even more discussions on Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, be sure to check out the Yesterworld podcast, where we do a deep dive on each Yesterworld subject. You can find the link to the podcast in the description below, but for now, we'll see you here next time on Yesterworld.